Hey, what's up guys? My name is Dylan and I'm a cycling coach here at Carmichael Training Systems in Brevard, North Carolina. Today we're going to be talking about whether or not weightlifting is beneficial for cycling and the science behind it. Whether or not lifting will make you faster on your bike is often hotly debated. In a sport where being lightweight is usually an advantage, a lot of athletes feel that if they go to the gym, they'll bulk up and be too heavy. Even amongst us coaches, there isn't a consensus. Some coaches prescribe a full lifting program to their athletes, while other coaches may just have their athletes do some light core work or nothing at all. Oftentimes when people talk about lifting for cycling, they're talking about being a more well-rounded athlete or preserving muscle mass as we age, injury prevention, or looking less like a twig in a social situation. This is all well and good, but the question we're asking here is, will lifting improve my cycling performance? Will including lifting into my training plan translate into more power on the bike during race season? The short answer is yes. Almost all of the scientific studies done on lifting and its effect on cycling show a benefit. Lifting on top of all of its other benefits will make you faster according to the scientific literature. Let's dive into the science so I can show you what I'm talking about. The first study we're gonna check out was published in the Journal of Strength and Conditioning Research and looked at whether strength training improves cycling economy in competitive cyclists. This is important that they use competitive cyclists. A lot of these studies will use untrained individuals, and a lot of times with these people, any sort of exercise they do will show improvement. So this study took trained cyclists, 12 men and four women, and assigned them to an intervention group or a control group. The intervention group performed squats at four sets of four rep max, three times per week for eight weeks, as a supplement to their normal endurance training. So we're talking about really heavy weight here. This isn't your typical low weight, high rep, that you see a lot of endurance athletes doing. The control group just continued their normal endurance training during this period. So what were the results? Well, the weight training group showed a 17.2% increase in time to exhaustion, while the control group showed no significant increase. So if we take a look at the graph, we can see an increase in one rep max and rate of force development. That's obviously to be expected with weight training, but what we care about is the last one, which is MAP time or time to exhaustion. So note that it increased without an increase in cycling economy. So basically the subjects improved their endurance without improving their aerobic ability. This also makes sense. Weight training does not significantly tax your aerobic system. All right, let's take a look at another study published in the Scandinavian Journal of Science and Medicine and Sport. This one was interesting because it looked at five minute all out power after 185 minutes of submaximal riding. So they're kind of trying to simulate the end of a road race, you could say. 20 well-trained subjects were assigned to a strength training group or a control group. And again, I'll stress that these were well-trained athletes. In this study, they were doing three sets of four to 10 rep max twice a week for 12 weeks. So again, very high weights here. The strength training group showed reductions in oxygen consumption, heart rate, blood lactate concentration, and rate of perceived exertion during the last hour of the 185 minutes of submaximal cycling. During the five minute all out effort, their average power increased from 371 watts to 400 watts while the control group saw no significant increase. So anybody who rides with a power meter knows that 30 watts added onto your five minute max is a huge deal. If there was a five minute climb at the end of a road race, 30 watts could be the difference between barely getting a top 10 and getting a podium. And this is pretty consistent across all the studies I could find on how weightlifting affects cycling. One showed a 12% increase in lactate threshold, while another showed an 11 to 13% increase in short term endurance. So we're talking four to eight minutes. So I guess now the question is why? What is happening physiologically that's causing this increase in performance? The studies that measure VO2 max all show no increase, which as I said makes sense because lifting is not an aerobic activity. One study concluded that the improved endurance performance may relate to a delayed activation of less efficient type 2 fibers, improved neuromuscular efficiency, conversion of fast twitch type 2 X fibers into more fatigue resistant type 2 A fibers, or improved musculotendinous stiffness. So if you've taken an exercise physiology course, you know that most of the strength gain you see when you first start lifting is from improved neuromuscular efficiency. 
What this means is that your body learns to fire more muscle fibers when doing hard work, and it also learns not to activate antagonist muscles. Antagonist muscles are muscles that are acting against the working muscle. An example for the quad would be the hamstring. The quad extends the knee while the hamstring flexes the knee. So it appears that this neuromuscular efficiency is also important for endurance sports like cycling, as well as delaying the activation of the more fatigue-prone type 2 fibers and making those fibers more fatigue resistant. So that's the research in a nutshell, but now I'd like to talk a little bit about my own experience with lifting. I've been bike racing for the past 10 years, and I've been lifting for the past four years. Before that, I had hardly set foot in a gym, let alone do any sort of serious lifting. My focus for the past few years has been the NUE series, or National Ultra Endurance Series, which consists of long mountain bike races across the US, usually 100 miles in length. When I was 20 years old, I finished 5th place in the NUE series, usually getting myself a podium, but never quite reaching that top step. That winter, I decided to incorporate lifting into my off-season training plan. The next year, I won my first NUE race, the Kohuta 100, and I went on to win the NUE series for 2016. So did weightlifting that year cause that jump in fitness? Well, there are a lot of factors to consider here. I was one year older, I certainly had more experience, and I could have trained a little bit differently on the bike. However, in my opinion, weightlifting did give me a little bit of an edge that season, and it certainly wasn't a detriment. So it appears that weightlifting does improve your cycling performance, at least according to the scientific literature. The question now is, how do I incorporate lifting into my training program? I'll be talking about that in an upcoming video. If you've got questions about lifting to improve your cycling, leave them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Be sure to like this video and share it with someone who is skeptical about hitting the gym. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook for more coaching content, and if you want to get faster and you're looking for a coach to help you, shoot me an email at djohnson at trainwright.com.